In Las Vegas, we looked out our window and we kind of copied the top three floors of the Paris Hotel. Probably should have used smaller envelopes because it turned out to be the largest home in America. We never sought out to build the biggest house in America. It's just, it, it's like kind of happened. This is so beautiful. This is our grand ballroom. A new film opening this weekend chronicles one wealthy Orlando's family quest to build a 90,000 square foot mansion. Folks, that is bigger than the White House and all of this in the middle of the economic downturn. The movie is called The Queen of Versailles and the filmmaker Lauren Greenfield. She's right here beside me on Off Duty. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Your film is gaining quite a bit of buzz. I mean, you already won an award at Sundance, the film festival for best directing for a documentary. We're going to talk about the house and all of its glorious stats in just a moment, but the heart of your film is this family, uh, David and his wife, uh, Jackie Siegel. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, I have been, I'm a photographer and I've been photographing wealth and consumerism for a number of years and I actually met Jackie through her shopping. She's a passionate shopper. She, right. in the height of the boom, she would spend up to a million dollars a year. And I met her when I was photographing Donatella Versace. And started and, and basically they were building the biggest house in America. And he's and a timeshare king. He's a timeshare king and that basically I started filming because they were building the biggest house right. but then realized that he had this other dream building the biggest the tallest timeshare tower that had ever been built. It was a 52 story glass tower on the Las Vegas strip. As part of Westgate Resorts which is his company. Exactly. Right. And the whole idea in the film originally was kind of looking at the American dream and how big it had become with this biggest house. And then when I saw that they were building this tower, that became an interesting part too because the tower cost over $600 million to right. build. And after the economic crisis affected the timeshare business, the tower proved to be the overreach. And they ended up going into default on both properties and, and then because that affected their home life as well as his business life which you chronicle in the film exactly and it took a while to affect their home life that happened about the middle of 2010 but when it did I realized that this was really an allegory about the overreaching of America and kind of how even the one percent can overreach as well as the rest the rest of us exactly it right. was like a supersized version of what had happened in so many places and in my wealth project and in my documentation of the crash as a photographer I had seen so many of these stories I had photographed closure cities in California. I had photographed the crash right. in Dubai. I ended up photographing the real estate debacle in Ireland. So there was something strangely familiar and yet of epic proportion to the Siegel story. A lot of the story takes place in their current home, which is not small. It is 26,000 square feet as they struggle to build this 90,000 square foot mansion. David says he's building it because he can. I mean, that is his answer that he gives you in the film. Let's just tick off. I mean, so the, 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 the house, if it were finished, would have 10 kitchens, one for sushi making, a 6,000 square foot master bedroom, 13 bedrooms, an 80 foot waterfall, grotto with three hot tubs, stop me at some point, you know, roller rink. I mean, these, these were all in the plans for this home. How far did along you say did, bowling alley? I think, bowl, I did not say bowling alley. <laughs> See, we had to get in the bowling alley. How far did they get? How finished is the home at this point? Um, the home is the same state as we see in the film, which is basically a shell. Now let's talk about the couple themselves. Um, you must have become very close to them while you were filming this. How was that relationship? Were you closer to the wife? Were you closer to the husband, both of them? Jackie was always the heart of the story for me. That's the person I met first, and she was really kind of the access into their whole world, and I ended up calling it the Queen of Versailles because I think Jackie really is the heart of the story. The thing that's interesting to me about both of them is they come from humble origins, and so even though they're phenomenally rich in the beginning of the film, they have a kind of down-home quality, especially mm -hmm. Jackie, that makes them strangely relatable, even though they're kind of living a stratospheric life. And I think that relate that, that their ability to be relatable actually becomes more real when the economic crisis kind of and their life falls down into to chaos. Earth. I mean, the realest thing for me was the tension between the two of them. We'll get to that in a moment. But David, of course, he's suing you now. He's claiming that the Queen of Versailles de depicts Westgate resorts in an array of, as he says, defamatory, derogatory, and damaging ways. Now, your attorney has said that you're protected by the First Amendment, as well as the fact that you had in writing that you would have to settle any dispute in arbitration. What I want to know from you, though, is you spend as much time with people, then he sues you. How's that changed your relationship with the couple? 
Well, I've been really pleased that Jackie has been very supportive of the film. She's met me in several festivals. She was at the premiere at Sundance. She came to several other festivals and is here today for our premiere tonight at the Museum of Modern Art. So she's sticking by it. Yes. And, you know, it's unfortunate that David feels that way, but I think it's, it's sometimes comes with the territory. And particularly here, there are very clear business interests for him. that are involved. Does she know, you, you're very close to Jackie, uh, you know, she in the film, there is tension between the two of them that comes up more and more as the film progresses. I mean, he's almost unkind to her at points, you know, saying, you know, now that you're 40, I'm going to trade you in for two 20-year-olds. You know, say she'll come to, up to kiss him and he'll say, you know, get, get away from me. I don't want to kiss you the way you, you're too old for me now. Did that come about, you think, because of the filming? Did you, or did you really believe that their relationship worsened because of the quote, financial straits they were in. It definitely had nothing to do with the filming. I mean, of course it was the, what they were going through as a family. I think the amazing thing about filming the Seagulls is they actually lived their life completely and honestly in front of the camera, which very few people can do. But we did spend three years. We filmed in a cinema verite fashion, fly on the wall, not interfering with anything that was going on, and rolling all the time. And they really got used to it. They're also both very comfortable in front of the camera. And you can really see the evolution of my relationship with them. In the beginning, in the opening scene, Jackie's wearing makeup. She's posing for my camera. By the end, no makeup, barefoot, and I'm even filming. Right. Uh, dermatological treatment that she has. I saw that, the, right, right, the Botox here, yeah. So they, and, and David too, and I'm so grateful for his candor during this whole process. I think the thing that was extraordinary about the Seagulls is they signed on when the going was good, but they stayed on and continued to share their lives with equal candor, even more candor, as things got tough. So what's your bet? Do you think that they, I mean, if they could end up building the house, would they try and keep this house, you think? Well, David wants to finish the house. Jackie now says, the children will be grown by the time they finish it, and she's just as soon stay in their current house. Well, it's a, it's a, I, I watched it. Um, I couldn't stop watching it. It's called The Queen of Versailles. And some of the most poignant interviews actually come with some of the staffers in the film as well. I thought the nanny and the driver and so forth. But I'll leave that for people to go see the film. Thanks so much for being with us, Lauren Greenfield. Thank you.